guys i can't believe i'm making this video welcome to matchsticks island tour we're finished i think it took me just under two months which is crazy and i'm so excited to show you just in case you're new here the backstory is this used to be a bustling industrial town revolving around the factories on the site there was a malfunction at one of the factories. A lot of people lost their jobs and their livelihood and moved away. So the people that have stayed are the people that are trying to just get by. And there are a couple of crazy scientists that have moved in as well, just to add another little layer to this story. So let's get started. So I will show you the map here and then I will also show you the little illustration that I did which lays it out a little bit better because as you can see it's pretty hard to figure out what's going on here. This is probably the barest a map has ever looked on any of my finished islands but here we go. So we have these crazy twins here who we're just going to ignore. We have Barold, Kiki, Ruby, Rasha, Roswell and Drake who all used to be factory workers and have lived on the island for most of their lives. And then we have Raddle and Petrie who have moved in quite recently and Cephalopot and Ribbit, their little test subjects. So as you can see this is the map I illustrated myself which hopefully just gives you guys a better idea of how the island is set up and how to work your way around. Let's go. So I'm going to try and talk you through all of this. I tried to pick the perfect weather just as the fog is coming in and the rain is lightly pouring down. If you do see any codes here that you like, please do check out my card that's linked down below. As always, all of the codes used on this island will be listed there. So here we have a little entrance. This is a very realistic island. So it's quite flat, there's a lot of custom codes and a lot of road. So if we just cross here, this will obviously be where you will start on your dream address visit. Now across here we have our subway. Again, I'm going for the hyper-realism. Just, you know, quite bare, quite minimum. It was really fun this time around to not clutter everywhere so much. If we go down the subway, let's go down here. This was one of the first builds I did. There is a full speed build on my channel, but it was super fun and I just love this little idea. So this is the abandoned subway station. As you can see, it's very dark and gloomy. Trying not to destroy the realism by walking on the tracks. Super cute. In a creepy way. So this is actually the basement of my house. It was really easy to block it off from the rest of the house now that we have the partition walls. So yeah, this is the subway right behind resident services, little parking space. If you follow the road up here, you have the parking space for the larger vehicles. Over here we have one of my favorite areas, which is the junkyard. I really wanted to make the most of all the Objects that have fire or flames for this area, it just adds some dimension. I love the noises and just the depth of this area. Of course, there's the obligatory couch and shopping cart. Would a junkyard be a junkyard without those? 
Now, this area is kind of special to me. So this whole island is special because it's the island that I started alongside starting my YouTube and my Instagram. And so every little area just reminds me of different milestones that I've hit. And this area, this little playground, was the first ever live stream that I did. We made this. So it was a Twitch live stream because I originally wanted it to be YouTube, but I didn't realize you had to wait 24 hours to activate live streams. So we did it on Twitch and I got the bug for streaming. So this is the little play area, obviously for the children. As I said, this used to be a bustling city. Obviously people working in the factory would have families too. So if we walk down here, I'm going to just walk all the way across the pavement. Here we have just a little seating area just to break up the space here, add a bit of dimension to what was a very flat area. We have Daisy May here today. So if we cross here, as you can see, the road starts to become a bit more deteriorated. This is Nooks. One of the hardest things to do on this island was not being able to go into nooks because I was terrified that I was just going to tip it over the edge and it would be upgraded because I just feel like this little hut version suits the island so much better. So this is like the broken road. Here I feel like, you know, there was an attempt at some point to mend it but people have just given up. If you'll notice as well, I have almost completely blocked off all of my beaches on this island and I've used the trees and the plants and hedges to sort of mask it so hopefully as you walk along you won't be able to see the beach at all other than a couple of areas where it has been left open. So this fog is coming in thick. So if we run up here to the left hand side we have our first of the factories. This is the smaller factory. As you can see, it's basically just a shell at this point. It's the back of Nook's Cranny there. So we have, if any of the villagers are home, we will pop inside to see. Hopefully one of these four little villagers here will be at home so I can show you there's distinctively two residential areas on this island. This is where the scientists have moved in and their little test subjects. So as I said, not all of the beach is closed. This area of the beach has been left open and this is Cephalobot's house. He has a little bit of beach. As I say, he is a test subject and I feel like they are being a bit humane just by giving him access to the beach every now and then with all this crazy glowing moss. But yeah, this is completely blocked off in terms of being able to get to any other part of the beach. If we go down here, up here is where the scientists have moved in. So as you can see, it's a bit more techy. Fortunately, they're not in, but they have more science lab kind of interiors. Obviously, when you visit the Dream Address, hopefully you will be able to see some different villagers' interiors. Down here, we have just an alleyway, little dump area, which was actually really, really fun to do. I love how many amazing items there are in Animal Crossing to do these like trash core islands. Right, this side to the left, we have our main factory area. So let's check that out. I wanted it to look like it had been closed off, but obviously we can still just sneak in there to have a look at what's going on. So yeah, we obviously have the clapped out car and this was the larger of the two factories. So as you can see here, we do have what's left of the factory structure, which is quite substantial and it did go all the way back. But as you'll see, as we walk behind here, it doesn't quite look the same anymore. 
So up here we have the site of the incident. So there's a huge hole where the factory floor used to be. And again, I've used lots of flame and fire items. I really love how the big campfire looks. The flames are amazing. And from this angle, you can't really tell that it is a campfire. It does look like it could just be something on fire in there. So I really liked how that turned out. Then we have like the little yard back here, which just has a couple of storage sheds. And you know, it's obviously seen way better days. So yeah, I suppose the whole lore of this island is centered around this area. So now if we move up here, we have the shipping area where items for the factory or goods for the people living here would have been shipped in. As you can see, it's kind of been taken over by the sea a little bit and definitely been taken over by nature. And this is just the secret beach. Super simply decorated, but quite effective, I think. And then if we go down here, I didn't really know what to do with this area on the second layer, so I thought I'd just make it some kind of waterway, um, perhaps like a fresh water source for people on the island. But I think it turned out okay. There's hardly any waterscaping on this island, so it's quite nice to add a little bit of it there. Now we are into our main residence area. I love how foggy it is. Now my dream address is this weather but it's a little bit earlier on so the fog isn't as bad so hopefully things won't be as cloudy you can see things a bit clearer but I did want to do my tour like this because I really think it sets the scene of it being this sort of abandoned factory city plonked on an island in the middle of the ocean so it is quite early in the morning here as well Most of my villagers will be asleep. Yeah, sleeping. So this is just super simple. Lots of trash everywhere. A couple of little alleyways up here. Just full of rubbish, completely abandoned. Then up here we have the second level of our residence area with just a couple of houses. Now I wanted this to look like it was a house. As you can see all of the houses on this island are quite uniform and I wanted this to look like it was a house that's been abandoned, it's fallen down and so we just have this little shell here. We have one villager at home, so I will show you. To be honest, all of the houses in the two separate residential areas are quite similar. We have Barold's house here. All of the residential houses in this little sector of the island are very much empty, abandoned, not much going on on the inside. This is actually a really good one for you guys to see to get the general vibe. And then as I say, on the factory side of the island, we do have more of the sort of scientific test subject lab section. So I don't know how many of my villagers you'll be able to go into their houses during your dream address visit, but hopefully it's a few more than this and you can just get a bit more of a general feel of what I was going for on this island. And goodbye, Barold. So let's run down here. Again, I've kind of done a main road and like a little cycle path filled up a lot more space which was really helpful. Down here I have the bus stop where you can wait for your bus and my villagers do actually use that quite often which is quite cute. 
And then we're just going to run by here. This is just the side of the subway and residence services. Really basic design around residence services. Kiki is not going anywhere. And then down here to the right hand side we have the city park. So this obviously used to be like quite a green bustling place but again as with the rest of the island it has seen better days still quite pretty though i think so as you walk through all the trees this used to be a really beautiful tree which has since been chopped down just have some seating and then we kind of go into this area here as you can see there are a couple of tents up here, we can hopefully go inside. So this is just like a little homeless area slash um, hostel place which I think fits in with the trash core theme really well. That tent was pretty bare, this one has a little bit more in it. As you can see here it's just a bit of a mess. The cockroaches, I think, do add a pretty good touch. And if we run up here, lots of turnips everywhere. So this is the hostel. We'll go in here last. I do want to just take you up here. Now, this is probably the most well-maintained area of the island. It is the graveyard. So without being too morbid, when the accident happened, um, obviously some villagers are no longer with us. So this is just a place to kind of commemorate it. I like to think that this stone here talks about it a little bit. And we have this little sort of area here. And it's just quite a nice little memorial place. So you've got the pond, you've got this pond too, which I also love is a little foggy at the moment, and a little bench for you to sit down on as well. Down here, now I didn't really know what to do with my campsite. When it comes to Trash Core Islands, I feel like the campsite is just not on theme. It's too pretty, but I did want it to be accessible so I could see who was at my campsite or use amiibos for villagers if I needed to. So I thought I would just leave it open and kind of Trash Core it up a little bit. We just have, again, my favourite items on this island are the campfires. We just have a little bit going on there, just adding some interest in the background. And then this beach, I kind of trashed up a little bit, lots of fire there. And then, as always, everything else is completely blocked off and you can't reach it. So if we go up here, I think, we're almost done. The last place for us to look at is the hostel. So let's go in. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Again, I've gone for a much more realistic build for the interior this time. We won't go downstairs because obviously, as I said, that is blocked off. That is the subway. Here we have like a little reception entrance area where you can pick up a magazine or a newspaper. It's pretty run down, but you can kind of tell that there is someone looking after it and trying to keep on top of it. Here we have like a little reception desk. And then back here, if I spin this around, we have a little soup kitchen. So this is obviously for the homeless people on the island and people staying at the hostel. And I just think it's a really cute little area. And it's a great way to make use of this room, especially not having the basement. So being a room down, I wanted to try and fit a couple of different things into this one room. We have a little kitchen, which compared to the rest of the place is actually quite clean, which is nice. Lots going on, lots to look at. I really wanted this island to be about paying attention to details. I think with not so much terraforming and waterscaping, I really had the time and really wanted to focus on details, items, making things make sense. To the left hand side here, we have like the communal bathroom, shower, some toilet paper. 
Now again, seen better days, but there is someone here who's trying to keep on top of things and keep it clean. So now we're gonna go to my favorite room in the building. This is actually the hostel room, I guess, where people stay. Now I love the whole vibe of this room. I love how run down it is. There's like a fan and a TV that have clearly been in here for like the past 30 years. Everything's kind of worn out and outdated. But again, you know, the important things are clean. The beds here. I love this wallpaper. And yeah, there's just everything you could need. A little place for you to sit, watch TV, eat, play some snooker, play some pool, wash your clothes, board games. Super, super fun little area. I think actually, as this is one of my favourite places, let's say goodbye in this room. I just want to thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. This island is going to be so bittersweet to say goodbye to. I'm really, really looking forward to replacing this with a no time travelling island. But at the same time, this has kind of been my baby and it's definitely been my YouTube baby. I started my channel with this island and I feel like I've documented its whole journey, which is amazing. I can't believe how much this channel has grown and I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching. Please do visit the dream address if you'd like to see things at a slower pace and in more detail. My card is linked down below where you can find all of my socials, my custom codes and all of my dream addresses. Like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye from Matchstick. Subscribe to my videos and hit the bell. Ring. Bye for now. See you soon.